Welcome to IT Visionaries, created by The Mission, your number one source for accelerated learning. On today's episode of IT Visionaries, we are joined by Frederick Schoenfro, the CIO of Citizens Bank. With extensive CIO and executive experience at companies like Schneider and Ernst & Young, Frederick now heads IT and drives digital initiatives at Citizens Bank. His new charter is to innovate the core IT at Citizens Bank and lead them through the massive fintech disruptions that the industry is currently experiencing. Enjoy today's episode. IT Visionaries is brought to you by the Lightning Platform by Salesforce. The Lightning Platform is a leading cloud platform that makes building AI-powered apps faster and easier. With Salesforce, now everyone is empowered to build apps for their organization. Learn more at salesforce.com slash build apps. Welcome to another episode of IT Visionaries. We have a lovely view of San Francisco because we are at Dreamforce in the Salesforce Tower. 170,000 people are just below us hanging out at Dreamforce, and we have a special guest. Frederick, how's it going? Very good. Uh, very excited to be here today. So Frederick is the CIO of Citizens Bank, and we have a bunch of stuff we're going to go through with banking innovation and technology. Really good episode for you, and let's get into it. So tell me a little bit about yourself and your role at Citizens Bank. Uh, sure. So I'm the CIO of the commercial bank. I support all the commercial applications, and I'm also managing some of the shared services um, center of excellence, like testing, we do robotics, BPM testing as well. So uh, all of that, so services which are being leveraged across the bank. And what's kind of the scope of responsibilities? Like how big is Citizens Bank? What are the like kind of numbers we're working with? Uh, you mean in terms of what? Billions of assets, things like that. So yeah, a Citizens is a super regional bank. We have 120 billions of assets and we're serving many, many customers in the commercial bank, as well as in the consumer side of the bank. So we have millions of customers on the consumer side of the bank, and we have, what, 6,000 uh, customers on the commercial side. And it's a very fast-growing uh, company uh, since we separated from Royal Bank of Scotland, and we've been very successful since. And what does IT look like at Citizens Bank? How do you support growth and innovation? Oh, being a bank, uh, mainly what you're selling are services which are relying on technology to be delivered. So uh, the role of technology is actually to bring the right tools, the right technology, so the business can actually grow and reach their objective. So you do that in several ways. Uh, I think the most important way is making sure that whatever you're investing is going into the right buckets and you bring the right technology at the right time. So innovation is absolutely critical for us because that's how we fuel the growth of the bank. You know. Every bank is more or less offering the same services. And if you want to differentiate yourself, you need to bring something new to the table. So we see innovation mainly around five different ways. So we are doing a lot of things internally. We have what we call the innovation labs, and we're actually kicking off a new one in our new headquarter in Johnston, Rhode Island. And we have what we call an innovation council, where we go through all the innovation ideas of the bank and we decide which one we think is more a priority for the bank and which one are not. And after that, we put that to execution either internally or with some of our outsourcing partners. So that's one way of doing it. Second way is we are engaging with a lot of external companies. So the banks are not necessarily well known for their innovation capability. So what we do, we look outside and we engage with some fintechs and startups which are the, you know, good ideas, and we sign some partnership with them. What's kind of your role in, in finding, sourcing those things? Are you kind of like, is your team responsible for finding that? Uh, it's uh, the innovation process. It's like a funnel. So what we want is we want everyone coming with a good idea or you know, meeting a vendor or a fintech that is supposed to be interesting in bringing that on the table and we review that. So yes, I'm bringing some of those fintechs to the table, but some of my business partners are doing uh, exactly the same. So what we do once we have identified the right targets, then we work together in defining if it's the right solution for us or not. I think it's really interesting about these innovation labs mm -hmm. too. How did this kind of idea come about and what are some of the results that you've seen? Oh, the ideas are various. It's coming from all over the place. Uh, we've done some internal hackathon to try to find some good ideas. 
we've done some external ones as well. Uh, you're, so you are doing internal hackathons. Yeah, we've done one uh, with our internal partners uh, last year. So the Innovation Lab, what we want to do with that is anyone having an ID, you have some kind of platform available so you can do some development, try something, bring some external people if you need to, and see how it goes. We also have a full API sandbox, which is available uh, with some synthetic data that anyone can use. Oh, so, that's anyone in the company? Anyone in the company. It's open uh, also uh, outside of the company. So. Oh, wow. That's mm -hmm. really cool. And those, those types of opportunities, you know, we, we talk a lot in the podcast about like innovation coming from yep. the ground up and, um, and kind of building that culture. How do you, mm -hmm. you know, push things out to the organization and to the larger organization that these kind of things are happening? Is it something that, you know, IT is, is leading? Is it something where you're partnering with business um, to make sure everybody's uh, like kind of in the loop on that? We usually partner with the business. If I give you the example of the hackathon, the way we did that, we sat down with the head of digital for the, for the consumer bank and with the head of treasury services, and we defined what is the issue they are trying to resolve. And based on that, this is the theme uh, that we used to launch the hackathon. So we want to make sure we are very closely uh, working in partnership with our business line because we're here again to sell them and find the right solution for them. So even a hackathon is, is done this way. So they are part of the jury, they evaluate the various answers, and uh, we decide what we consider is uh, best action or who are the next company we want to work with. And so are you kind of share mm -hmm. your, your thought process of like how IT and how mm -hmm. as a CIO you can partner with business? It has many different facets to that, to, to that. So the first thing, if you want to be a good CIO, you need to be sitting at the business table. So you need to understand what the strategy is, where you want to grow, you want to bring more deposits, you want to bring some more fee, uh, what are the areas of the bank where we are underserving our customers. So that's critical to define your strategic roadmap. Uh, so you need to align your strategy with the business strategy. That's point number one. I think point number two is bringing the right technology uh, on the table. So there's a lot of things happening in the market right now. So we watch what our competitors are doing, but as I said, we watch also what are the startups doing and every good idea we think that can contribute to our strategic objective. We are bringing that on the table and we are discussing, uh, is it worthwhile pursuing? Is it solving our objective going this way or engaging with this partner or this startup? So that's the way we've done that. And I think it has been pretty successful so far. We really are working very closely together. And it's true for me, but it's also true for my team. They are working directly uh, with some subpart and some of the various business line in the commercial bank. That's really cool. I, you know, we've heard of different organizations doing using things like whether it's citizen development or you know other ways to engage employees internally. I think the idea of having employee you know, internal hackathons. Like you see that stuff at Facebook, you know, right down the road from where we are now. You see that stuff from a lot of tech companies. Yeah. How many folks do you think in banking are doing that? I, we are not the first one. Several of the banks have been doing it. I think there is hackathon and hackathon. Some people are doing that very openly, so no, no theme. And I'm not sure it's necessarily leading to the same results. So you want something applicable. So if you at least narrow a bit the theme uh, that you want people to cover, it's better. Uh, second, you need to actually also give them the right tools and sandbox so they can actually play. If you don't give that, then it's very difficult to get something which can be uh, productionalized and, uh, and put uh, and, and go live. We are also leveraging for the external hackathon our employees. So we had 40 different volunteers and mentors who came and actually spent time with the various teams for the hackathon to help them understand the business issues we are trying to resolve or give them some information on how the bank was working. And uh, the more people we involve, the more you help building the culture of innovation and the more you want people to think out of the box and uh, propose some new ideas and new solutions. That's really interesting. Do you see that the other, the business units of, you know, whether it's sales and service and marketing or other parts of customer experience, do you see that they're kind of rethinking things or trying to look at other types of technologies for the, how they could do, um, do things better? The first thing you need to ask yourself is how are you serving your customers? Because everything should derive from that. Uh, so we've worked intensively on our customer journeys uh, over the last 12 months to define what experience we wanted to deliver to our customers. And the how to do it comes later on. So the outcome of uh, those customer journey work has been the launch of our digital bank, uh, which we did a few months ago. 
And we're also completely revamping uh, our digital platform uh, for the consumer bank. We're doing the same thing for the commercial bank. We're completely relaunching our cash management platform. It's going to be a cloud-based solution. And we rethought completely uh, the tool, the services we are bringing. It's more relaunch of the business than necessarily just a technology play. Switching gears a little bit toward your background and the leadership aspect of mm-hmm. IT, you've managed you've built and managed teams that are up to, you know, 1200 people around the globe. How do you as an IT leader manage like large groups of other Mm -hmm. IT leaders? And what are you looking for, for talent on your teams? Uh, Hopefully you don't manage directly 1200 people yourself would be very difficult to manage. Uh, So you need to rely on, uh, on good leaders. So I think the key to success is finding the right talent on pouring them properly and making sure they are in an environment where they can thrive and bring new ideas and collaborate with the rest of the uh, rest of their team. So we've done that across the world, which is bringing additional complexity because of the difficult, the different cultures and the different time zone, which is never easy to manage. But I would say bring the right leaders, make sure you empower them, stretch them a little bit because you want to make sure they think uh, through the next step and they are not in their comfort zone and making sure you bring the right collaborative environment. So any good ideas coming from China, you can apply that to the US or vice versa. Are you doing team offsites? How are you bringing folks together and cross-pollinating those ideas? You need to bring people in the same room somewhere. So you can exchange, you can have this exchange of ideas, defining together what the strategy will be for the next six months, facilitate this kind of exchange and, uh, I think having everyone face to face in the same location is the only way to go. So that's how you at least align the leadership and create this kind of uh, collaborative mindset. The second piece, you need to go and visit the team. So it's not something where you can sit in an office and think that things are going well. If you don't show up in the various locations where you have uh, team members, I don't think you will be motivating them or inspiring them enough. So you also need to go meet them and actually uh, create some kind of interaction uh, across all the layers of the organization. What do you think makes a up and coming IT talent? Like what is, what are the characteristics that, you know, whether it's our listeners that are, that are leaders or, or folks that are, you know, trying to be at that place in their career someday, what are the folks that you see that are really pushing the pace of innovation and kind of the, for lack of a better term, you know, the all-stars on your team? I think they have the same type of personality. So visionaries are able to do a vision, being excited by bringing new things into the into the organization, uh, thinking out of the box. So challenging the way we've been doing uh, things in the past. And of course, there is the basics. So you need to have people who are able to execute. So it's nice having a strategy and a vision. If you don't execute uh, on it, then it's unfortunately useless. So you need to have this kind of mix of people who are pretty strong, able to understand vision, are excited about innovation and change, and can drive these changes across the organization as well. When you are vetting the technical talent, mm-hmm. do you have any kind of like mental models or things that you use to like find and get those talent or anything that like you're telling um, the leaders on your team saying like, hey, you know, these are the places we're looking, whether that's, you know, like schools or pockets or like talent pools or things that you're saying like, hey, always be on the lookout for this. Or is it just kind of the things that you're mentioning? Probably a good example of uh, getting out of the norm. So Coming from a manufacturing background, I was working for another company before when I joined a commercial bank. So if they were looking to replicate a model, I would never have been in that current position. So you need to find people with the right uh, mindset, uh, ahead properly structured. And usually I'm testing their ability to actually drive by asking some kind of example questions. So what has been your biggest challenge? How did you overcome that? What would you have done differently? Or what is your biggest failure? What did you learn from it? Uh, think so they can actually articulate the issues they've been through and how they manage to overcome that. And you can you can guess how involved they were and if they are really driving the show or not. Let's get a little bit into the actual banking innovation and mm-hmm. technology here. You know, Citizens Bank recently launched a digital bank for online savings and CDs. How does IT play a role in that kind of transformation? 
IT has been the delivery arm. So we came to the conclusion that we needed to bring more deposits into the bank. And we thought that having a digital bank next to Citizens Bank was the right way of doing it. So we needed to set up something from scratch and freeing us from the existing legacy landscape, which has most of the US bank uh, are in the same position where we have mainframe in the back end and some not necessarily very modern technology. So our role was to execute that in, uh, in a short period of time. So we partner with a uh, few of our outsourcing partners to do that. And we were here to make sure the solution was implemented as fast as we could. And you have like an enormous back office with compliance mm. and all of the banking, like the core banking uh, related to your technology stack and all that. So how do you balance the kind of day-to-day mm. fulfillment or what you know what we've referred to in the past as kind of the ticket taking versus the other side, which is the innovation element? Are those separate? Are they blended? Do you have folks that are working on you know long-term projects and folks that are focused on day-to-day? Like how do you kind of structure those things? I think the best way of doing that is by managing your portfolio uh, appropriately. So to the point you are making, you need to keep the lights on. Uh, No matter what system you have in the background, they need to be up and running and you need to do some investment to make sure this is happening. So it should be one part of your portfolio of investment. After we need to keep in line with the regulation. So we need to do some kind of monetary investment because the regulations are changing or these new things that we need to cope with. So the innovation piece, I think the best way of doing that is setting aside a certain percentage of your investment and say, this is going to be, you know, marginal improvement or, you know, completely new type of innovation. And this is how you manage that. So by managing the portfolio and trying to juggle with keeping the lights on, making some uh, uh, changes, you know, which are more incremental and uh, bringing some disruptive type of technologies within your environment. What are those kind of big bets that you're making? I mean, what are the things where you go to the leadership team uh, or to the CEO and say, you kind of cringe when you're going to say like, hey, we, I really think that this thing is coming faster than we realized. We need to start investing in it now. Like what were some of those big bets that you've been making over the past four years or that you're looking to make? I think the digital bank, both on the consumer side and on the commercial side, were big bets for us. Uh, because we don't know how the market was going to react. So, so far it has been good, but you, know, you roll a dice, you know more or less what happened with other, you know, other banks, but you never know until you actually launch the product, how well people are going to react to that. We did the same thing when we did the robo-advisor, partnering with uh, SigFig. We didn't know how it would go, would it be a success or not, because it was pretty cutting edge. So now we have some, you know, few months uh, feedback on that. So we know exactly how successful it was. But at the beginning, you hope you make a business case based on some assumption and you hope the assumption are realizing themselves. Big bets are actually, there is also the opposite stuff. So you think you want to do some big bets and say, okay, let's invest in blockchain. We could have done that two years ago. We consider the market was not mature enough. So it's the other way around. You're explaining We don't think we want to invest money there because it's too early. The market is trying to find some use case and we don't have a lot of money. We think we better invest in some other innovation capability instead of blockchain. And when time comes, then you reactivate that and say, now it's time for us to work on it. And this is actually what we are doing. It's funny you say that. In a previous episode, we had Amber Balde, who used to do... She led the blockchain team at J.P. Morgan Chase. Mm. And one of the things she said on the podcast, she was like 99.99% of businesses aren't developing on using blockchain technology right now because it's just too cost prohibitive. It's just expensive to, to do. And that's like her startup is working on that. But I think it's something that's really relevant because we don't really know what the future is going to hold. We know it's going to be really mm. important, but do you, how much money do you want to sink into a project that might never ever launch. That's uh, the actual bet. So you need to make some conscious decision on where you want to invest and where you don't want to invest or where you want to wait, uh, depending on how the market is evolving. So blockchain now, I think, is mature. We have few use cases we are working on. And I think making the conscious decision two years ago saying, we are not going to spend any time on it. we we'll wait to see what's going to emerge of the market. And then we're going to be fast in following up the market and executing was probably a better strategy than sinking a massive amount of money in something where the outcome would be very unpredictable. What can you share what you're working on with blockchain now? Yeah, we have a free use case uh, we are interested in, cross-border payments. 
Trade Finance and uh, AML KYC. That's great. Okay, final question before the lightning round. What's your best advice for a first time CIO? I think it's critical that you create the right relationship with the business. So the time where the CIO could be sitting on the top of his ivory tower, defining what he wanted to do without necessarily being aligned with the business is long over. So you really need to understand the the business. You need to be part of the business, actually. Understand the strategy and making sure that you Look at what's happening on the market, have an understanding of what your competitors is doing or are doing, and see uh, what are the emerging technologies that could have a good use case for you. And think outside of the boundaries of your company. Innovation is not necessarily going to come from, from within your organization. There's a lot of very smart people you know, outside uh, launching companies based on some ideas. We have a pace of innovation which is faster than ours. Instead of trying to catch up internally, sometimes it's way better and more productive to find the right partners and create a relationship and a partnership with them instead of reinventing the wheel yourself. That's great. Couldn't agree more. Let's get into the lightning round. So lightning round, these are fast and easy questions, just like the lightning platform. Okay. Fast and easy. Are you ready? Yeah, go for it. All right. Number one, what app are you using on your phone that is the most fun? I'm a pilot. For flights is the app that I'm using and I cannot fly without it. Well, you know, you're the second pilot that we've had mm. on the podcast. That's so funny. What's, what's with IT leaders and, uh, and, and flying planes? I don't know. <laughs> That's always been my passion. He said so. the same thing. Mm. He said the same. Mm. I don't know. I wonder what the app is. Uh, I wonder if it's the same. We'll have to check in, the, in our show notes. 99% of the chance is that it's the same app. Most of the pilots are using the same. So That's so funny. Um, what's your favorite time-saving tool? A good question. Uh, uh, my calendar. If it's not in my calendar, there, it doesn't exist. That's, we get that most popular answer. What's your favorite use of AI or chatbots that you've seen recently? Uh, I'm a big fan and big user of uh, Alexa and uh, Google Home. And I'm actually looking forward to some POCs we will be doing on some of our platforms soon. So Yesterday, before Dreamforce, uh, Salesforce just launched the Siri integration too. So yep. it's, it's going to be an interesting time for AI. Favorite team, sports or otherwise? Uh, being French, I have to confess that I followed the Soccer World Cup very... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a big win. That was very big in France, as you can easily guess. Yeah. Uh, besides that, I'm a Patriots fan. Oh, gr- mm. interesting. Mm. It's not going so well. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, so it's far, not, but, not, not the year. I'm a Raiders fan, mm. so it's even worse. Favorite podcast or recent book that you've read or listened to? Uh, favorite podcast. I like Ted, actually. Yeah. Because you have various videos from many different topics. It's a good way of understanding what's happening in medical, in the medical field or any of the field, actually. And uh, it's always good to keep your mind open. Do you have a favorite one day getaway where you live in France? Not really. Not in France. As I live in Rhode Island, I would say I like going to Newport for a day. Oh, so you live in Rhode Island? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, thought you were, I thought you were based in France. Oh. Oh, I moved to the U.S. 11 years ago. Oh, jeez. Mm. Look at me. Bad host. Um, <laughs> Not at all. Uh, yeah, New, oh, Newport's great. Actually, the real one-day getaway would be uh, flying to Martha's Vineyard in my plane, spending the day there and flying back home. That is, it sounds delightful. Mm. Are you taking co-pilots? Like, what, can we have listeners reach out? Because I'm sure a lot of people would take you up on that. I take up to three people in my plane, and uh, it's a very short uh, flight, so 25 minutes. And it's a oh, lot of fun. Cool. It's beautiful. What technology are you most excited about? I think AI and conversational uh, UI are probably my two favorite technology right now because I really think it can actually transform completely our day-to-day life. It's already starting, so. Best advice for someone trying to be a CIO? Don't be afraid of being a, a change agent because that's what we're looking for. People who can change the way we do business And I think that's one of the most important traits for any CIO. Change your world, no matter how big it is. And that's probably the way where you're going to go. I love it. That's it for the lightning round. Lightning round is presented by the lightning platform by Salesforce, leading cloud platform that makes building AI powered apps faster and easier with Salesforce. Now building apps is everyone's business. Learn more at salesforce.com slash build apps. Any final thoughts for the audience? 
No, I, uh, I hope everyone is going to be enjoying these next uh, few days. It's sunny weather in San Francisco, and I'm looking forward to uh, go through the event. Yeah, and if anyone is following along and feels feels bad they're not at Dreamforce, we'll be sharing a lot of different stuff afterwards. So, yeah, thanks so much for hanging out. Thank you for having me today. Thank you again to our friends at Salesforce. IT Visionaries is brought to you by the Lightning Platform by Salesforce, a leading cloud platform that makes building AI-powered apps faster and easier. With Salesforce, now everyone can build apps for their organization. Learn more at salesforce.com slash buildapps.